Well, this title just feels like clickbait, doesn't it? Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan and welcome to Ball in Europe. Uh, we are, of course, uh, discussing the comments really by Jason Kidd comparing Luka Doncic not just to Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki, but also to Michael Jordan, who is broadly seen as the greatest of all time. The debate basically these days, possibly the most boring debate in all of basketball is whether he or LeBron is the greatest of all time. I like to enjoy people for who they are, and that may be a recurring theme in this video. But uh, yeah, we're going to discuss that today. We're going to discuss really the context, uh, first of all from the Dirk and the rest of Europe's great ballers perspective. Then we're going to go into where Luca is today in terms of the all-time stuff. And lastly, we're going to discuss the whole, well, does he belong in a conversation with MJ just yet? And before we get to all of that though, it is competition time. Just there beside Nikola Jokic is my book, I Like It Loud. If this video gets over a thousand views, we will give one copy of that away to somebody in the comments for doing that with all of our videos for the foreseeable future they get over a thousand views so leave a comment share it tell your friends you know the drill and if you are the comment we pick you'll get sent out we have just cleared a thousand videos in our most recent video regarding mr yoke which well the most recent one to hit a thousand so that winner we picked out at some point between this video going up and the next one going up and i will uh, inform the winner that they've got it and i will get their details and send it on to them so congrats to them if you want a chance to win the book comment obviously subscribe like share with your friends you know the drill folks so now let's get to the meat of it starting first off with the whole dirk thing So we're going to discuss first, we're going to look at the comments that Jason Kidd actually said. And it was in an appearance on Tuesday with uh, 97.1 The Freaks, The Downbeat. Gosh, I love American radio station names and show titles. So he proclaimed that Luka Doncic, who's 24, belongs in the conversation with Michael Jordan and others on a short list in gr of the greatest players in NBA history. He's better than Dirk said kid of a Hall of Famer who was teammates with Nowitzki on the Mavs 2011 championship team. He's in the atmosphere of MJ, the best to ever do it, LeBron, Kobe. And just so, and so just to appreciate what this young man's doing at the age 24 is something that Dallas has never seen. I've said this internally, he is better than Dirk. He does things that Dirk could never do. And now is the opportunity of getting the right people around him to ultimately win a championship. So I think the context is quite important in that while he's not saying, I think, that, uh, you know, he's overtaken MJ yet uh, by any stretch or might endeavor. Uh, he is saying right now that Luca is better already than what Dirk's already done, which maybe for US fans isn't that controversial a comment. Certainly for Mavs fans it probably is because for them the love for Dirk is unreal. Uh, and I think it's justified as well, just to be clear, like he brought Dallas a championship with a great team, Kid obviously on it. Uh, Tyson Chandler as well, Roddy Bobois, who of course has gone on to win a couple of EuroLeague titles back here in Europe. Just a fantastically fun team to watch. And uh, yeah, no, you know, Rick Carlisle's squad back then was great. And obviously Dirk had a phenomenal career. And the debate sort of in Europe was sort of over the course of their careers of Pau, of Parker, of Dirk, who the greatest Euro of all time was. Which is kind of funny given where we are now in the Euro age of basketball. Because I think it was broadly agreed Dirk in the end uh, was the best from the continent up to a certain point. But like already you look at what's out there. We obviously have Luca, but there's also Giannis Antetokounmpo who is extremely high up now in that debate of is he the greatest European to ever play the game? And like Giannis' achievements already on the court, like, you know, a couple of MVPs, he's uh, obviously won a championship. Uh, you know, they are not to be sniffed at. And like for a lot of Europeans right now, they would wonder who the better European right now in the NBA is. Is it Giannis? Is it Luca? Like this is not a settled debate. And especially because they're such different players, different roles, different jobs for their teams, and obviously slightly different phases of their careers. So this is a much deeper debate than you might think. Like again, he's 24. He's so young still. He has the vast bulk of his basketball career still ahead of him which is kind of what makes this an odd debate to have because getting all the way to the MJ debate, which is what Jason Kidd wants to fast forward to, which is kind of cool, is quite something because on this side of the Atlantic, we haven't really settled yet where Lucas stands in the pantheon of Europeans. 
uh, of all time Euros. And even the three I named there, by the way, if I go, I went Pow, I went Parker, and I went Dirk, I'm sure there are some European viewers watching this kind of going, well, actually, no, I'd have a couple of other guys above them in the debate. Uh, and uh, I understand that entirely. Like, you know, and obviously there'll be the Botaroga, uh, uh, home boys, and great player, obviously. Uh, although Dejan never played in the NBA, uh, but that shouldn't take him out of the debate either. So, you know, it's it's a curious one, uh, and it's an odd one. So the Euro debate itself is quite something, but we'll stick with Dirk for now, because he's saying the best Mav, not the best Euro, Jason is. I think until Luca wins a championship, it's going to be hard for him to take the, you know, the title of best Mav ever from Dirk, or at least un not for a few more years, you know, obviously his numbers, his ability, what he's doing is unreal, and Dirk did have better teams, particularly contextually, around him than Luke has had so far. But yeah, so that's there. So now let's talk about Luca to now. I've been saying this quite a lot in videos lately. Uh, and I just before I get onto that, oh yeah, I didn't even mention Nikola Jokic because he's also in the debate of best Euro alive right now. The reason I didn't mention him flat out there was I was so convinced over the Luca Yanis debate <laughs> in the previous section because of the two balls behind me that it's like, oh yeah, also, you know, that guy who's won a championship and two MVPs and has also been considered one of the greatest big men ever. So you've got Jokic, Yanis, and Luca there right now who are in contention for greatest European of all time. So uh, sorry for all the Jokic homers there. That was a complete error. I was distracted by the balls. Hey, hey, hey. And not by the one that's got a, a trophy there. It was directed by that. But now anyway, Luka as he is now. Because he hasn't achieved what Nikola Jokic has achieved. He's not achieved what Giannis Antetokounmpo has achieved. Um, you know, but uh, he's still achieved a lot. And it really is quite something. Because like I said, he's already a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, which is something I've been saying quite a bit lately. Um, and the reason I, you know, not just about him, but about other players, because of there's the Euro, well, the Euro, but the international player slot, which automatically goes in. But we can actually almost put Luca's international achievements aside. We won't immediately, but we will in a second. Because he's won Euro basket. He's done so much in Europe as well before he came, like winning MVP of Euro League, winning Euro League Final Four MVP, obviously winning Euro League as well. Getting Slovenia, not just their first ever title at Eurobasket, that was their first ever medal in an international tournament, World Cup, Olympics, or Eurobasket of any type, any. And he was there at Goran Dragic to get them that. So you put all of his FIBA stuff, and obviously he nearly carried them to a medal in the Olympics, nearly carried them to an Olympic final, has had two great tournaments since then in Eurobasket and the World Cup, uh, not meddling in either, obviously, and uh, quarterfinal exits in both, in fact. But you kind of go, like, the body of work is there, uh, that he's, like, uh, you know, walking in on that alone. But like I said, we can put all that to one side. Because based on the history of the Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame, we can ignore his international work because he's already hit the two of the key barriers, really, for guarantee you get into the Hall of Fame. He's always got a long way to go still on counting stats because he is only a few years into his career. And as a result, he's only, say, ha he's only about the halfway point on the typical points required to be an absolute lock for the Hall of Fame. But he has hit two key, key barriers, which basically mean it's almost a cert he goes in if he was to retire this summer. Uh, the two barriers are he's got five All-Stars now, which is big, but also crucial because five All-Stars is typically the, okay, if you have that, you're making the Hall of Fame number, uh, historically speaking. He's also been on an NBA All-NBA first team. Only four players since the merger with the ABA who have been named to an All-NBA first team have not made it to the Hall of Fame. And you think of all the players who've made those lists. So the two key delineators that really jump out there mean, yeah, like, Luke is already in the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, at 24. Great. But that's for when he's a much older dude. Like, that's for 20 years from now, like, you know, depending on how long he wants to play. Uh, like if we're saying 20 years from now, by the way, he's, that's him at the age of 44. Uh, so implying he plays at 39. I don't know if he's going to go that long, but let's say he goes to 35, so 11 more seasons. Uh, that's still 16 years from now before he's in the Hall of Fame, because we're assuming first ballot in this context. So it's a long, long way away. Like, I'll be even older then, uh, you know? And it's kind of wild. So when you look at it in that context... It is a bit weird that we're discussing him in the greatest of all time debate already. 
But in terms of the greatest of the NBA right now, yeah, he is in the conversation. Like when you look at the MVPs, you know, it's your Jokic's, it's your Embiid's, it's your Lucas are the guys coming up over and over again in the conversation right now. But unlike Jokic, uh, although very much like Embiid, Luka's not won at all yet. Uh, you know, he's not even been to a finals. And that's that's a key barrier. Like, you know, because if you're going to get into the GOAT debate at any point, you've got to at least get to the finals, and that's being kind. You've really got to win more than one championship. And Luka's yet to win either of those. So he's doing great. He's fantastic. But should he belong in the conversation with Jordan already? For his age and his experience, yes. As in, if you're comparing him to Jordan at 24 and so many seasons in the NBA, which are different, obviously, because MJ came in a bit older than Luca did, then yes, I think he's a reasonable comparison to compare him to Michael Jordan. If you're saying that he's already in the debate for greatest of all time, no, no he is not. And that is not a slight on him because one, greatest of all time is obviously a very, very narrow debate and it ought to be. But also, he actually hasn't been around long enough. Like, for all we marvel at what Luke has done already in the NBA, we always use the word already. Like, we say it for a reason, because there's so much more to come. He has a long, long time in basketball ahead of him to either make his case for the GOAT debate or to kind of remove himself from it. And just to be clear, he could have one of the greatest basketball careers of all time, starting from today, scratch, and going to the end. And we're still not going to be putting him in the greatest of all time debate. Like, he has to have more than just one of the greatest basketball careers of all time. He has to have one of the best of the best of the best of the best basketball careers of all time. Is he capable of it? Absolutely. Guaranteed to be capable of it. Is he going to do it? I have no idea. I'd love to see him in the, in the debate. Like for a guy from a place so small, like Slovenia is like a third of the population of Ireland. Like phenomenal. I would be thrilled to see that. Utterly. I have no idea if it's going to happen. And you know, Jay Kidd. He's seen a lot more basketball than you or me. And, uh, you know, he's, seen a lot, he's, he's played with a lot better players than you or me, too. Uh, I think that's the understatement of understatements. And although I did play with a couple of guys who did beat the USA once, but that's like literally the only time I ever played organized basketball. But they did beat the USA in 2006, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, you know, it's. I think it's reasonable to say that it's a little early to be putting Luca in the conversation. Let's let, come back to me when he's got a chip, you know, or an MVP at least. And uh, then we'll have that conversation. But listen, it's fun to talk about. It's great to recognize that Luke was already an all-timer, because he is. And I hope he this video feels silly in a few years' time that, uh, you know, so we're talking about Luca 24, and we should really be talking about what an incredible player he is at 27 or 29 that makes 24-year-old Luca just look like, you know, a fun toy. Uh, which is hilarious because he's obviously an enormous contributor, but that's what I'm saying. I want the player I see in three, four years' time to make this phenomenal player I see right now look not as good. Uh, kind of cool, right? So, anyway, yeah. Um, thanks you all for tuning in. Sorry for the glaring omission of Nicola earlier in the video. It's distracted my eyeballs. Uh, and uh, I hope you have subscribed. If you haven't yet, please do. Like I said earlier on, leave a comment if you want to be in with a chance to win a book. We do need to clear a thousand views to make it uh, well, basically worthwhile with the postage because if we get a thousand views, the reason I said that barrier is we get just enough income to cover the postage anywhere in the world of the book to where you are. So I'm trying to make it affordable for myself to actually give these away. But uh, really thank your engagement. And uh, listen, that's all i got to say for now. Catch you next time.